Good evening all. Today we are going to see about error control coding in digital communication. Channel coding theorem states that it is possible to transmit information with an arbitrarily small probability of error provided that information rate R is less than or equal to error C called channel capacity. It can be stated again that given a source of m equally likely messages with m greater than greater than 1, which is generating information data with r, given channel with channel capacity c, r is less than or equal to c. There exists a coding technique such that the output of the source may be transmitted over the channel with a probability of error in the received message which may be made arbitrarily small. The block diagram of a digital communication system, the channel coding, is as shown here. First, the input message bits are fed to a channel encoder. Output of the channel encoder is fed to the modulator from where it is fed to the discrete channel. And the noise is added there. This noisy signal from the channel is received by the demodulator. And then the demodulated signal is fed to the channel decoder from which we will be able to retrieve the original message bits. Error control coding. The transmission of the data over the channel depends upon the two parameters, transmitted power and the channel bandwidth. The power spectral density of a channel noise and these two parameters determine the signal to noise power ratio. That is, Signal to noise power ratio is determined by power spectral density of the channel noise, transmitted power, and the channel bandwidth. The signal to noise power ratio determines the probability of error of the modulation scheme. For a given signal to noise ratio, the error probability can be reduced further by using coding techniques. The channel encoder adds extra bits, that is, redundancy, to the message bits. Encoded signal is then transmitted over the noisy channel. The channel decoder identifies the redundant bits and uses them to detect and correct the errors in the message bits it says. This encoder is the channel encoder is used at the transmitter side and the channel decoder is used at the receiver side. The channel encoder adds extra bits to the message bits, that is redundant bits. And then the channel decoder identifies the redundant bits and use them to detect and correct errors in the message bits. Error control coding can be classified into two types. One is known as the block codes, and another one is known as the convolutional code. These codes, that is the block codes, consist of n number of bits in one block or the code word. This code word consists of k message bits, and n minus k will be the redundant bits or the check bits or the parity bits. Such type of codes are called as block codes and is known, called as n comma k block codes, where the n represents the total number of bits in one block or the code board, and k represents the messages in the code board. Convolutional codes. In convolutional codes, the coding operation is discrete time convolution of the input sequence with the impulse response of the encoder. The convolutional encoder accepts the message bits continuously and generates the encoded sequence continuously. Important terms used in error control coding are code word. The code word represents the encoded block of n bits. It contains the message bits and the redundant bits. Code rate, the ratio of message bits and the encoder output bits is called the code rate. Code rate is defined by R and it is mathematically given as K by L. Hamming distance. The Hamming distance between the two code vectors is equal to the number of elements in which they differ. If you have the code is X is equal to 101 and Y is equivalent to 110, then these two codes differ only in Second and the third bits, therefore the Hamming distance between X and Y is known as 2. Minimum distance. Minimum distance is known as the Hamming distance between the valid code vectors. Code efficiency is the ratio of the message bits in a block to the 
transmitted bits for that block by the encode. It can be stated mathematically as code efficiency is equal to K by N. Weight is the code. The number of non-zero elements with the transmitted code vector is called the vector weight. It is denoted by W of X, where X is the code vector. For example, if you have the code 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, then the weight of this code vector will be W of X is equal to 5, since it has 5 number of ones in the code vector. Linear block code. Principle is for a block of k message bits, n minus k parity bits or check bits are added. Hence, the total bits at the output of the channel encoder or n. Such codes are called n comma k block codes. Next, we shall see about the Hamming code. Hamming code is one type of block linear block code. These codes satisfy the following condition. Number of check bits Q must be greater than or equal to 3. Block length N must be equal to 2Q minus 1. And number of message bits K equal to N minus Q. Minimum distance must be equal to 3. So we have to note down that Hamming code is one type of linear block code which satisfies a special condition such that check bits are greater than or equal to 3 and the block length is 2q minus 1 and the minimum distance must be equivalent to 3. Further, we can manipulate that r equal to k by n. Substituting k values equal to n minus q, you get the equation as n minus q by n, which can be again rewritten as 1 minus q by n. Putting the value of n is equal to 2 power q minus 1, we get 1 minus q by 2 power q minus 1. Error deduction and correction capabilities of the Hamming code. Since the minimum distance of the Hamming code is 3, it can be used to detect double errors or correct single errors. We shall see the distance requirement and the errors that can be corrected and detected by the Hamming code. So first point is to detect up to S errors per word. D minimum should satisfy the condition that it must be greater than or equal to S plus 1, where S represents the number of errors. Then the condition for correcting T errors is given by D minimum is greater than or equal to 2T plus 1. Then correcting up to two uh, T errors and direct S greater than T errors is given by D minimum must be greater than or equal to T plus S plus 1. So by having the condition satisfied by the D minimum, it will, the code will be able to detect errors or correct errors, or it will be able to detect and correct errors. So from that equation, you can note on that for detecting double errors, D minimum should be greater than or equal to 3. And for correcting one error, it should be greater than or equal to 3. For better understanding, we shall see one problem. The parity check matrix of a particular 7, 4 linear block code is given by H is equal unto uh, matrix as shown here. Find the generator matrix G. List all the code vectors. Minimum distance between the code vectors. And how many errors can be detected? How many errors can be corrected? Now let us note down the value of the n and k, that is the number of total bits and number of the message bits. So since it is given that it is a 7, 4 block code, n is equivalent to 7 and k equal to 4. Therefore, check bits is n minus k equivalent to 7 minus 4 equal to q is equal to 3 bits. So totally there will be 3 check bits. So to obtain the generator matrix, we have to note down that. Uh, we have a check matrix represented by H is equal to P transpose IQ, where P represents a parity and then I represents the identity matrix. Here H is given like this. So from this H, we'll be able to note down the P matrix by transposing the first half of the matrix. So this triple one zero becomes triple one zero row wise becomes column wise. 
Similarly, the next column will be double one zero one, and then the last column will be one zero double one. Next, in order to calculate the generator matrix, you have to note down the identity matrix first, and then note down the parity matrix. Since you have the condition that parity is of the order k cross q, definitely i should be of the order k. So you substitute this i with four cross four matrix. Four cross four identity matrix, and then it should be noted with the parity matrix. So in this way, you'll be able to note down the generator matrix. Next, from the generator matrix, you'll be able to obtain the check bits. So check bit is given by the relation C is equal to M and P, where M represents a message, bit P represents a parity. So C1, C2, C3 can be mathematically noted as M1, M2, M3, M4 into P. So since P is a four cross three matrix, surely your M columns must be equal to four. So you choose it as a one cross four matrix. Message is of one cross four matrix as shown here. So you substitute for the P matrix. Then by multiplying uh, this message bits with the parity bits, we'll be able to note down the check bits. So, for example, if you consider C1 means it will be equal to M1 multiplied by 1 plus M2 multiplied by 1 plus M3 multiplied by 1 plus M4 multiplied by 0. Here you have to replace your addition by modulo addition. So you have the condition as C1 equal to M1 x or M2 x or M3 and C2 equal to M1 x or M2 x or M4. C3 equal to M1 x or M3 x or M4. So on having these relations, we will be able to note down the code vector. So first is you have to form a table like this, provided with the message vector, check bits, and then the code vector of the core word, and then the weight of the code vector. So in the message vector, we have four bits. So you have to write all the Four possible combinations. So you have the entries from zero zero till fifteen. You have to enter here. So there are possible combinations is one to sixteen, and then you can calculate C one from the relation that it will be equal unto M one X or M two X or M three. So here the first is M one X or M two X or M three. So it will be equal unto zero. So it is zero, and then Here you have zero, so again it is zero. Here you have one, so it is one. Here you have one, so again one. And then this one is shifted here, so you get it as one. So whenever you have odd number of ones in M1, M2, M3, you have the C1 as one. One. Otherwise, it will be equal to zero. Similarly, you have to note down your C2 with respect to this equation, M1, M2, M4. So between these, you have to perform the modulo addition, that is XOR operation. So from the table, you will be able to note down your M1, M2, and M4. So from this, you can find out your C2. So here, M1, M2 is zero zero, and then M4 is one. So your C3 is one. So if you have odd number of ones in M1, M2, M4, then you can note down your C2 is equal to one. So in this way, you'll be able to fill the columns C2, and then C3 can be noted from this relation M1 X or M3 X or M4. And after that, you can write down the code for which is the combination of the message vector and the check bits. Then after noting down the code word, you can note down the weight of the code vector. So here you have no one, so zero. So here you have three ones, so three. Here also you have three, four, three ones. So from this to this, M1 till C3. Similarly, here you have again three ones, and then you have four ones. So in this way, you have to note down the weight of the code word. So minimum weight here is nothing but equal to three, non-zero minimum weight. So the smallest weight of any non-zero code vector is three. D minimum is equal to three. 
error detection and correction capability since d minimum is equal to 3 you have to substitute in the equation d minimum greater than or equal to s plus 1 where s represents the errors that can be detected 3 greater than or equal to s plus 1 so it will be equal to s will be rewrite in the equation you get s is less than or equal to 2 so it will be able to detect two errors then d minimum is greater than or equal to 2 t plus 1 this is the relationship for correcting the errors so 3 greater than or equal to 2 t plus 1 so t is less than or equal to 1 so you will be able to correct one error and then this is the encoder of the hamming thing dependent upon the relation between your uh, c3 and other that is dependent relation between the message bits and the check bits you'll be able to draw the encoder so c3 is given by m1 xor m3 xor m4 similarly c2 is given by m1 xor m2 xor m4 and then similarly c1 is equal to m1 xor m3 m1 xor m3 so in this way you'll be able to note down the um encoder of the hamming code so here you have a switch like position so that it will be traversing from message register to the check bit register so that we'll be able to get the code words in sequence from both the registers so dependent upon the input bit sequence we'll be able to generate your code words the next problem For a systematic six comma three linear block code, and generator matrix as given, find all the code vectors, draw the encoder circuit for the above code, and then find the minimum Hamming weight. So here G is given by I three P three cross three. So since it is a parity matrix from the picture. from the given data that is g you will be note down the this is your p matrix given by this so p matrix is given by 101 0 11 and then 110 1, and then the check bit is given by the relation c equal to m into p m represents a message bit and p represents a parity bit so as is three check bits so that you have three messages and three cross three parity matrix So from this multiplication, that is m1 into n plus m3. So from this matrix multiplication, you will be able to note down the equation for the check bit. C1 equal to m1 x or m3. C2 equal to m2 x or m3. C3 equal to m1 x or m2. With this relation, you will be able to generate the code. So here you have. So M1, M2, M3. So list all the possible combinations from zero to seven, and then for calculating C1, you have to consider the relation as M1 X or M3. So M1 X or M3, zero zero, zero one so one, zero 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 one one, one zero zero. So it is one. So in this way, you'll be able to note down the check bits. After noting down the check bit C1, you have to note down for C2. It is given by M2 X or M3. So in this tabulation, you have the M2, M3. So X or in this M2 and M3, you get this C2 column. And then C3 is given by the relation M1 X or M2. So first two columns represent your M1 and M2. So X or in this, you will get one here. Similarly, here also one. Here one. Again, it will be zero. So in this way, you have to note down the check bits. Then you have to write the both the check bits and the message bits together. This represents the final code vector x. And then you note down the weight of the code w of x. So here, this code consists of no um, one, so it is zero. It has three ones, and then three ones, and then four ones. Again. Finally, you will be noting that it is consists of three ones. So the d weight of the code is equal to three. So d minimum will be equal to three here. 
so from the relationship between the messages and the four vectors you'll be able to draw the encoder so to and the switch traverses from messages to the check bits so that it will be able to provide a correct code so thank you all we shall see the rest of the things in the next class